Hey guys, welcome back into Iron Pros TV. Wayne Grayson here, and we are at Trimble Dimensions this week in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we're here with Alan Pumplin of Caterpillar. And Alan, we're here today uh, in the booth where you guys are featuring your cat command technology. And, and honestly, whenever I'm talking to folks about this, I, I usually describe it as magic because whenever we think about kind of like the, the state of, uh, let's just say network or internet infrastructure in this country, obviously we have a lot of work to do. There's a lot of hope that we'll kind of figure some of that stuff out with, with 5G connectivity. But whenever we talk about remote control of machines, obviously the network is of the utmost importance. And so what we've got going on here, guys, is, is an operator who's operating uh, switching, able to switch between uh, pretty quickly between an excavator and a dozer that's working at Tanaha Hills at Caterpillar's facility there. That's about 300 miles away from here, yep. a four, four or five hour drive. And if you sit down and you start to operate this thing, the, the, the input lag or the latency between, you know, putting your inputs in through the controls and what you're seeing on the screen, really it's almost imperceptible. So, uh, Alan, kind of take us through the high points of this technology, how it's improved in the last couple of years. Obviously, we started off on the, the mining side, the production yep. side, but we are in uh, a territory now with the technology where it's improved to where we're getting onto construction sites and it's making more sense for the construction customers, not just, as we were talking about, not just from a safety standpoint, but from a productivity standpoint. The highlights of what you're seeing now, this is a new station with universal controls, so that means I can take control of an excavator, I can switch to the dozer, I can switch to a skid steer, I can switch to small wheel loaders. So you can imagine the possibilities between being able to switch between different families across multiple different locations, right? And, and that is done through, like you were talking about, through a network. And so, um, you know, having a quality network is, is very important, obviously, for the performance. What you put into it, you're going to get out. And so, um, but our customers are doing that, right? Right. And, and Caterpillar is there alongside our customers to take this journey and, and help them, giving them the requirements, helping them fine tune their networks to run these type of applications. We have a lot of great success stories. Tell us a little bit about these customers that are putting it to use today and on the construction side sure. in particular, what, why are they using the technology? How did they you know, approach this technology and say, hey, that is something that would definitely help me in my business? What are those customers looking like and what are they using it for? Well, first and foremost, you know, we, we work closely with our customers to solve their challenges and some of our customers have unique challenges. For example, we have a, a, a Stephen Doring customer that you can imagine they're doing midstream Stephen Doring. That means that they load and unload ships on the river, so they don't have a fixed port. Right. They bring the crane up to the ship that's anchored on the, on the, on, you know, the, uh, the Mississippi River. Right. So they have an initiative with basically no boots on the barge. Right. They don't want to put people into the ship's hold right, to, to right. consolidate the material when they're unloading them. So they're using remote control. Okay. Dozens of machines now up and down the Mississippi are being remotely controlled they go into ship's hold, keeping operators safe, consolidating material to be unloaded, right? Is it fairly common for one of the operators to be switching between machines at this point? Absolutely, so okay. now you imagine the, the day in the life of the operator before remote control, right. they would spend an hour or so on the boat going to the location, and when they, they're there in location, they're only running a very small percentage of the time, because as they get to the bottom of the ship hold is when they need to consolidate material, right? Yeah. So you're, you're having an operator with very low utilization. Now I can put them in a centralized location, yep. avoid putting them out on the water, avoid any accidents, yep. and now they can switch control to whatever barge is at that point where they need a machine to consolidate the material. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about this, like the, the conversation for so long around this technology has been around that safety. Oh, well, no, this is just if, I, if I'm trying to remove an operator from a situation or an environment. Yep. But, but the reality of it is that the technology has advanced to such a point now that it really is a productivity solution Absolutely. and a speed solution. Like you said, a utilization uh, platform where you can have one operator and who's not wasted on going back and forth and who, who actually can, you know, at the physical location, he can switch between machines and be way more productive. Absolutely. So for many years, we've always been touting and pushing machine availability, right? right? Yeah. The machine's not moving, it's not making you money. That's right. 
but now we're in a unique situation um, now that with the constraint on qualified operators, I need to do more with less with the operators I do have. Sure. So now, if I can make that, if I increase the utilization of that operator, everybody's ahead. If I can take that operator and make them available across multiple job sites, across multiple machine families, you know, it's it's a win-win for everybody. Well, I feel like it's maybe less of an uphill battle with operators too, because with so much of this remote control, or even, even if we're talking about automation, I, I feel like the perception of that is you're taking control away from me, and if anything, this technology is giving them even more control, right? Absolutely, right. You know, so they can have multiple machines right. on the same on the same site, you know, and and, and supporting himself, right? That's right. Uh, so yeah, that the. the uh, Configurations, the uh, applications are endless, right? And, oh, and sure. we're finding this out, um, you know, as we work with customers coming up with new applications that that they that they're coming forward with, uh, with because this, of this, because of this technology. And, and you know, the, we were talking about this too, but like the big reason behind that, guys, is the is, is the fact that apart from not being in the machine, when when you can switch between multiple machines and you can extend your control without even having to get out of the cab, but just like flicking a switch and, and able to, you can actually set up these like these these macros basically where you're able to kind of like programmatically go in and, and the nature of the work changes from just machine operation more into like a planning and you know uh, a, a way that you're actually having like an active role in, in planning what's taking place on a job site, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And then, and uh, again, it's nice because you can, you can take that, that best operator that you have and make them available right. across those sites that you need that kind of experience and, uh, and, and utilize that. Right. So yeah, it's been very popular, right? I mean, obviously yeah. safety, everybody understands that. It's been around driving, you know, safety has been that, that core driver for this type of technology for many years, especially in mining. Sure. But now as we get into construction space, wow, the availability of operators a huge issue. That's really cool, and like I said, I mean, it, it really is uh, putting power back in the hands of operators in a really meaningful way. Um, and I guess like, to finish up here, tell us a little bit about the, the network requirements that something like this, it, it's, it's not as, as high or as strict as, as you would imagine, right? So let, tell, take us through the internet connection that, that, so, that's required by this. So you're local to where the machine's running, and we do have Wi-Fi, and um, you know, Caterpillar dealers are, are, we have a lot of folks that will support customers in their implementations of this. They, from a network perspective, right, we have some certified radios that we work with, um, only because when, as you can imagine, machines roam between right. radios, if I have a large work site, um, it's really important to maintain control, because we right. bring sound along with the, the vision to the operator. Uh, from a, so from a connectivity standpoint though, we're only talking about 10 megabytes of data to wow. the station, right. one megabyte up for the machine control. That's, that's incredible. So it's, it's been, we've done a lot of work to optimize that. I mean, guys, you're talking about the GPS data coming in, five different camera views on a, on, on a Netflix connection, essentially. If you can watch Netflix on it, you can probably do it on this uh, with a 10 megabit per second uh, uplink. Really cool stuff. Alan, thank you so much for, for taking us through thank you for uh, everything on Cat Command. Guys, be sure to uh, check out this technology with your local Cat dealer. It, it really is not, it, it, it seems something that's like, you know, a few years off. But if you sit down in one of these operator chairs and try it out, it, it really is for applications today. And there's so many cool things that you can kind of do for your business, new avenues of business that you could open up with this technology. So be sure to check it out. Be sure to visit us at ironpros.com where you can research all of Caterpillar's great product solutions. And like I said, check, check it out at your local cat dealer as well. Alan, thank you again. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.